Hey you guys, it's Matt Frazier, the Psychic Medium, and I am live right now, so come on in, you don't want to miss this. We're going to talk about a question that you guys have been literally, literally dying to ask me. I shouldn't say literally with that in that sentence, but you know what I'm talking about. I've been asked this every day. I try to avoid this topic as much as possible, but it seems to be on everyone's mind. I don't know what it is. There must be like this collective energy where everyone's just wondering this on the inside, and that is what happens to souls that don't make it to the other side? I have gotten so many comments from you guys and messages from you guys asking this question saying, Matt, I see all of your readings. All of your readings are so positive. Matt, I feel so good after watching your readings, but everyone that you talk to makes it to heaven. Are there ever souls that don't make it to heaven? And why don't you talk about them? Well, I want to tell you guys the God's honest truth. It's the reason why I'm here live with you guys making this video. So for all of you who are here, Come on in. Tell me where you're from. I see Linda is here. Hey, Linda Farrow. I also see I am here is here. I like that username. I also see Patty Ruffing is here. I also see that Anel is here. It's saying purgatory. We're going to talk all about it. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So share this live stream if you know that this is, if you know that there's someone that's interested in this topic because I don't like to talk about it all that much. But there's so much that I, I feel like you guys need to know because. First of all, I have to tell you, there are evil spirits and there are something called earthbound spirits. So I want to I want to talk to you guys all about it and explain to you what actually happens when a soul doesn't make it to the other side. So that being said, oh my God, thank you so much, Brenda. Brenda said she just shared the live. Thank you. I so, so, so appreciate that. And while I'm waiting for just a few more people to join, I hope that all of you guys have been enjoying all the videos I've been posting on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. And what I want you guys to know is this week I am back live on tour. So that being said, this week I am coming to give live readings up close and personal, all right? I'm coming to Plymouth, Massachusetts in ju just next week. And then I'm heading to Las Vegas, Nevada, where I will be giving readings live at the Venetian. So here's where you can join me. If you'd like to meet me live in person, come and see me in Plymouth, Massachusetts at Plymouth Memorial Hall. I'll be giving readings there on July 14th and 15th. And then I'm heading to Las Vegas, where I'll be giving readings. I think, what's the dates for Las Vegas? Hold on, I gotta get them up really quick. Hold on one second. Choo, 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 choo. What the hell? You can remember, I talked to more dead people. I don't even know where the hell I am half the time. I don't even know. I don't even know what, what time it is, where I am, or what it's doing. All right, Las Vegas is July 21st and July 22nd. I know that so many of you are flying in for that event. So am I. So freaking excited. I know that many of you are, att are attending from um, all over the United States and Canada. And this is my very special event because the Las Vegas event is the smallest event that I do. It's the most intimate event that I do. So, so excited to see you guys at the Las Vegas Venetian. Then I'm coming to Sacramento, California, Northfield, Ohio, Erie, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Detroit, Michigan, Moncton, Canada, Harris, Michigan, um, Omaha, Nebraska, Laughlin, Nevada, in Santa Rosa, California as well. So all the dates are up on my website, meetmattfraser.com. And it's at those events that I'm going to be doing one thing, and that is helping you connect with your loved ones in spirit. All right. That being said, let's talk about it. Negative souls, evil spirits, earthbound spirits, they all have one thing in common. And that one thing is that they don't transition on. These are the souls that do not make it to heaven and won't make it to heaven. And I know that that sounds super scary, and I know that many of you start to panic when I talk about not making it into heaven, right? How many times when I talk about souls not making it into heaven, that all of you guys saying, oh my God, Matt, oh my God, I'm so stressed, I'm so nervous. Does that mean I'm not making it into heaven? What happens if I don't make it into heaven? Oh my God. And if you're like me, okay, the minute that I bring up those terms and you think about not making it into heaven, right away, you start to think about all the things, right? in your head that you did that you were not proud of, the things that you regret, the things that, that you know, you did that you wish that you didn't back in the day. How many of you feel that way? How many of you, when I say, when I say to you, right, or talk about not making it into heaven, do you immediately start to panic and think about all the bad things that you did, you know, that you're not proud of, right? Because we've all been there. No one is perfect. And what I want you guys to know is this, is that it's actually relieving to me, when I hear people say to me, you know, Matt, oh my God, am I going to make it to heaven? I'm so upset because I did this, 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 and this, and I really regret that. Or Matt, I did this. Like for example, uh, Andrea saying, absolutely, she she definitely does. Andrea, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. I also see that uh, Anella saying, yes, I feel that way. I also see that um, uh, some of you guys are saying, yes, uh, I think about that all the time. 
What I want you to know is that if you're that way and you're saying, I look back on my life and yeah, I'm upset about the things that I did. I'm upset for the people that I hurt. I know right away you're making it into heaven. That doesn't surprise me one bit. I would be, I, I would be willing to bet my life on it. And here's the reason why. Because I know as a medium that we're, we all make mistakes here in this world, right? We all do things that we're not proud of, especially when we're younger. But the thing is, is that just because you make a mistake, right, or just because you are human, right, doesn't make you a bad person. Like, for example, someone asked me the other day, Matt, does it mean I'm not going to get into heaven because I've been depressed? I've been angry. I've been jealous over certain people. Like there was this woman that I was reading for. It was so, it was so tough. You guys, it was such a tough reading. She had lost her son here in this world. And since losing her son, she had just been angry and bitter and not herself and had been really jealous of other people who had strong, loving families. And she was crying, telling me this. And I said to her, no, that doesn't mean that you, you, you're a bad person, that you feel that way. You have a reason to feel that way. Your son passed away, you know, and just because she went through that life experience, right. And because it makes her feel that way now does not mean by any means that she's not making it to heaven. It doesn't mean that she's not a good person, right. It's normal to feel those ways. So I'm telling you this because I want to talk to you guys about the souls that actually don't. The souls that don't make it to heaven are the souls that were truly evil here in this world. Now, what I want you guys to know is that I'm not talking about your crotchety neighbor that's next door that yells at you for, you know, putting your car out in front of the house. Or it's always the crotchety neighbor, by the way, right? It's always the crop, crotchety neighbor that you're like, oh, that person is just the worst. Oh my God, that person's so negative. That person is so evil, right? Chances are that person's making it to heaven because even though they were grouchy, crotchety, and angry here in this world, right? Doesn't mean that they were evil here in this world. Maybe they were going through a medical illness. Maybe they were going through the loss of a husband. We don't know anyone else, anyone else's story or why they're that way. But the evil people are the people that really want to do harm. The people who hurt people here in this world intentionally, right? The people who did things intentionally, right? We can go down the list. Murderers. I don't even want to get into that. I don't, we'll leave it at murderers. Murderers. Um, I don't even want to say the word. I can't even say the words. I, I, you guys, I hate talking about negative things like that. I can't even, I, my mind like doesn't even want to go there. But you know what I'm saying? We'll leave it at murderers and anything more, right? We'll leave it at that. Murderers, terrorists, all those types of people. Those are the souls. Those are the souls that were truly evil here in this world, that hurt people here in this world, killed people here in this world. And those are the souls that won't make it to the other side. Now, I want to talk to you guys about this because there's this big misconception over who gets into heaven and who doesn't, who transitions and who doesn't. So what I want you guys to know is that there's either two things that happen when, when you die. You transition on and you go to heaven or you don't transition at all and you become earthbound. So there is no such thing as purgatory or hell per se, right? But I, when I hear those terms of hell or purgatory, I think that's the same way as describing earthbound spirits. So earthbound spirits, souls that don't cross over, evil souls, it all means the same thing, right? Souls that don't cross over, earthbound spirits are evil entities, evil souls that exist among us. So when those souls don't transition onto the other side, they stay here on earth as an invisible entity. And that's where hauntings come from. If you've ever got, if you guys have ever wondered why certain places are haunted, right? Most people, when they hear about a haunted insane asylums or a haunted buildings or, or haunted uh, uh, hospitals that were abandoned for years and years, think that they're abandoned, excuse me, think that they're uh, haunted just because they're abandoned or because bad things happen there. And of course, you know, we know that bad things happened in, you know, some uh, abandoned insane asylums or jails or things like that, right? It once housed bad people. But that's not actually the reason why it was haunted. Now, don't forget, some of that energy does get left over. When bad things happen in a place, it can trap some of that energy. But also, when souls don't transition onto the other side, where do, they, where do you think they go? They crawl to the far corners of the earth, and evil souls and evil entities love to be where nobody else is. It's the reason why evil souls and evil entities will go to places that were abandoned, abandoned houses, abandoned factories, abandoned, you know... Um, abandon hotels, right? Places like that because of the fact that it's alone, it's dark, and it's a place where they can hide away. 
evil souls don't like to be around happy people. It's the one thing that Hollywood gets wrong. I wish, I wish you guys that, you know, producers would let me sit in. I hope one day it happens. And when they're making one of those horror movies, because, you know, there's, there are so many facts that are wrong when you're making those movies. You know, anytime that you see those movies being made, it's always the typical American family that moves into a new house and the house just happens to be haunted. They're good people. They were Christian people. You know, they did nothing wrong within their life and they're haunted by dead people, right? By evil dead people. And what I can tell you is, is that that just doesn't happen. And what also doesn't happen where Hollywood gets it wrong is sometimes, right, well, Hollywood or books or movies will talk about stuck souls, souls that did not cross over. So what I want you guys to know is that the only time a soul doesn't cross over is because they're truly evil. Now, I want to tell you this because, you guys, this is something that really breaks my heart, all right? And I had to talk about it during this video because you would not believe the amount of emails my office gets on a monthly basis of people who come to me or, or want a reading because they um, were told by another medium that their husband or their child or their uh, their uh, mom or dad didn't transition over to the other side because they were stuck for different reasons. For example, one woman came. What one woman came to me? She was in absolute hysterics. Her daughter was murdered here in this world, and another me medium told her that the only way her daughter would be able to transition into heaven was when her daughter when when uh, her daughter's killer was found. You know, she said that her daughter was stuck between worlds and couldn't transition on to the other side until the killer was found. Um, another another uh, woman went to a medium and the medium told her that her son didn't transition over because he had committed suicide. And because he had committed suicide, um, the, because he committed suicide, um, he wanted to stay here with his mom. So he didn't transition over to the other side so he could still watch over her. And guys, this is just not true. I'm just telling you right now, it is not true. And here's the reason why. You know, when souls pass, right, and something terrible happens to them, let's say souls that, that were murdered, all the souls that were murdered that I, that I speak to, right, you can see the readings online, all those souls are in heaven. And thank God, because they're at peace, right? You know, when souls transition on to the other side, when they were murdered, when they're killed, no matter how they pass here in the physical, the spirit world does a really good job of explaining to them what's happening during that transition process. The so, the spirit world tells them, right, that by transitioning on, they're able to see their friends, they're able to see their families, they're able to watch over their families that they love here in the physical world. And they're able to be closer than they even were within life. So, you know, the fact that some mediums go on, and, and they're not real mediums, whoever says this, right? You know, whoever goes on and says to people, oh, your son didn't transition because he doesn't want to leave you. Or, you know, your daughter didn't transition because her killer wasn't found. That's just not the truth. You know, when your loved ones go to the other side, they know who killed them. They see who's who's killed them. And they see what a terrible person that person is. But what's amazing is, is that souls have told me one thing. Souls who have died, you know, in, in um, and been murdered here in the physical will tell me that, you know, even when justice isn't served here in this world, it's served on the other side because they never put back with their killers. And that's what's so amazing. And that's the reason why they're at peace on the other side. They're also at peace knowing that they truly haven't died and they're able to watch over their families. So I want to share with you this because I know that you all know, based on all the messages that I get, that somebody probably was given this misinformation. Somebody probably went to a medium and was told, oh, your loved one's stuck your loved ones on the other side, right? And some people are on here even saying that there's some mediums who say different. Listen, what I want you guys to know is this. Many times when someone's murdered here in this world, those souls will watch over their family members and they want their family members to be at peace. They're more concerned about their family members being at peace than they are about finding their killer or catching their killer. Because at the end of the day, guess what? When your loved ones pass away, they can see what's going to happen to that killer. And they can see that justice will be served. So that's something that I want to, I want to share with all of you, because I don't want you for one minute to think that just because your loved one passed in a tragic way, that they didn't make it to the side or they were stuck or didn't transition over. You know, what I've learned, because I, as you guys know, I've talked to souls who have passed in so many ways, suicides, murders, you know, um, uh, people who had passed in war. I mean, you name that I've talked to them, right? Those souls transition over, right? And what I can tell you is, is that only the souls that are truly evil 
Don't make it to the other side. So here's another myth bust that I got to tell you. And by the way, people will write on here, which I'm sure I'm, well, once this video gets, gets actually posted, we're live right now, but once it gets posted, you're going to see that there's going to be like the haters that come in and say, oh, that's not true. That's not, that's not that, you know, that's not true. That's not factual. Right. And by the way, somebody just asked, who just asked me, um, this is a really good question. So Samitra goes, Matt, well, as there is heaven, is there hell too? No, I haven't heard of a specific place that's hell. You know, no soul. Thank God. Thank God. No soul has come back to me and said, Matt, I'm trapped. I'm in hell, right? But I will tell you that souls, souls have come through and told me that they didn't make it to the other side, right? And I'll tell you that that happens in my own family. So this is a story that I want to share with all of you because, you know, this is where I really started to learn about the other side. So first of all, I had to tell you, when I was first brought up, you know, my grandmother and my mom, when I was first coming into my gifts and I was hearing from the souls, they always taught me that there's two vibrations. There's a higher vibration and the higher vibration is where your loved ones in spirit are, your angels are, all the people that watch over you are on the higher vibration. The higher vibration is heaven. It's an energy vibration. The lower vibration, right, which would some people refer to as hell, purgatory, whatever, whatever word you want to describe it as, right? I call it earthbound right? Or lower, the lower vibration here in this world are the souls that aren't able to transition on to the other side. So what's interesting is this, being a medium, right? I'd be lying to you if I say that you can talk to both. You can talk to good souls and bad souls, right? It's up to your personal preference. But I was brought up in a strict Catholic house, right? Even though we were mediums. And I'll tell you that my grandmother and my mother made sure from when I was young that they taught me never to speak to negative souls. Do not speak to souls that have not transitioned on because they were not good here in this world. They were evil here in this world, right? And they're still evil after they die. That's how. That's where evil spirits come from. Evil spirits were, pe were people just like me and you. And here's the secret, okay? This is a secret that no other medium will tell you. There's not that many of them, right? Just like if you look at the population, right? If you look at everybody here in this world, okay? And by the way, things are different. Things are different here in this world than they are, you know, in, in the afterlife. But if you look, if you look at everybody as a whole, if you look at how many good people they are, there are and how many evil people, I'm talking about really evil people who killed people and did terrible things here in this world. There's not that many compared to the, to compared to the millions of good people. It's a small, small percentage. I don't know. I don't have the statistics in front of me, but I'm willing to bet. I mean, I don't even know if it's 1%. I don't know. Right. So please know that in heaven, there is all of your loved ones there, right? And the evil people that are truly evil here in the physical world that don't transition over, there's all, it's only a small percentage. Only a small percentage, a, a, a minuscule percentage make up the evil spirits that don't transition on. So I'm telling you this because the good news, the good news, right? And this is what other people don't want you to believe is that mo um, chances are is that you'll never come across an evil spirit right? Unless you go looking for them. Like for example, paranormal investigators will tell you that nine times out of 10, when they get called to, and if we have any paranormal investigators uh, on here, please write in the comments, because I, I know there's a lot of paranormal uh, investigators that come on here and um, view my videos, which I love because paranormal investigators, they are professional, you guys. They are professional. They'll be the first ones to tell you that nine times out of, out of 10, when they come to certain houses and come to places that are said to be haunted, right? That many times they're not, right? It's truly rare that they find a place that is actually, actually haunted and actually has evil spirits there. So that's one of the things that I want you guys to know, right? And Zen Tara was saying, I was, I was a paranormal investigator, right? And you'll, and you'll also know that paranormal investigators, they do a lot to keep themselves um, to keep their energy clean. They do a lot to make sure that they're not bringing any spirits home with them, so on and so forth. Well, what I want you guys to know is this, is that yes, you can feel souls in your house. My, yes, sometimes those souls might not be the souls of your loved ones, but it doesn't mean your house is haunted, right? It might be just be a passing spirit. But what I can tell you is evil souls like to be by themselves. Go to, they like to go to places that are, you know, at the far corners of the earth or that are abandoned. And they can only come into your life if you let them in, playing with Ouija boards, you know, provoking them, going to, you know, uh, do, doing, uh, practicing unsafe mediumship, like trying to talk to the other souls. So listen, I'm not knocking anybody. 
there's some so there's some people who will say to me, and there's some mediums that I know that do the work, and they feel their calling is to talk to evil spirits, to talk to, to negative souls. And that's just not me. I won't talk to negative souls, won't deal with negative souls, won't deal with negative people in general. I've learned in my life through the bullying experiences and the and the people and the pe people that I've dealt with the, with the excuse me within my life that there's some people that are just evil and negative, and there's no way that you're going to turn them. I'm sorry. I'm telling you this right now. I feel as though, because some mediums feel that you can talk to the evil spirits and you might be able to change their mind. You might be able to transition over. I personally don't feel that way. You know, the same way that someone can be evil, nasty, and negative here in this world, right? The more you try to help them, the more they end up hurting you. You know, it's the same reason why I don't surround myself with negative people here in this life or the afterlife. So I'm telling you this because um, I also want to share with you how I first come to learn about kind of souls that don't transition on because it actually happened in my family. And I also want to share with you about um, one of the uh, one of the souls that came back to us. So this is something I'm not proud of you guys, but you know, obviously I share with you guys everything, and I'd be, you know, I've, I've always promised to be open and honest with you, and I'll always continue to do that. So my grandmother's brother, so my that would be my great uncle, right? He was in the mob back in the day, and he was not a nice person. That I know of, he didn't kill anybody, but he did hurt people. And he was a terrible, terrible person here in this world. I'm not even proud to tell the story. I don't even want to tell you guys the story. But he was in the mob. And you know, back in those days, he did some horrific things here in the physical world. My, my family only knows kind of a little bit of what he did. They don't know about everything that he did. But anyways, he was not a nice person. And do you know that when he first passed on to the other side, he was unreachable. Now, normally when souls pass away, right, they'll come through and they'll like talk to me and my mom and let us know that they made, made it to heaven and made it to the side. Well, this particular soul, my great uncle, was unreachable, meaning that, you know, when we would connect with the other side, he just wouldn't be there. We couldn't see him, hear him, experience him, nothing. And, you know, we automatically knew, oh, he didn't make it into heaven. Well, don't you know that, one day he actually came and spoke to my mom and he came to my mom and, you know, because of what he did here in life, they had a falling out here in the physical, he had a falling out with the, you know, the whole family. And do you know that he came to my mom in a dream and he said to my mom, well, it was the dream kind of half dream, half vision. My mom was going to sleep. And he had told my mom that he was um, in between worlds because of the terrible things that he did here in this world but he was working to redeem himself and that he would come back through when he finally made it to heaven. And when he made it to the other side, he acknowledged that he did terrible things here in this world. He acknowledged that he wasn't a good person. And he talked about having to work through different planes of redemption to get to the other side. So I thought that was so interesting because he told us, it's, I don't mean to laugh. He told us that he'd be back in touch, you know, when he did make it to the other side and when he was redeemed. And don't you know that, it's been 10 years and nobody's heard from this soul since. Like, we don't know what he's doing, where he is. He, obviously, he didn't make it to heaven yet. It must take a very long time. But that's something from my own family. And that's what I want you guys to know. Oh, thank you so much, Tammy. Goes, I, I can't thank you enough. Such a wonderful man. She's talking about me sharing that story. I got to tell you, I don't like sharing things like that, you know. But it's something that I got to I gotta share with you guys from because this is something that, you know, happened in my family. So it happened all that time ago. But the reason why I was telling you the story is that there is a chance for redemption. At least that's what he's told my mom, right? Is that he was working. He understood the bad things that he did. And there was a chance of redemption. Um, and, you know, there are souls. There are souls that are trapped that I feel, you know, um, are working towards redemption towards that way. But like I said, for me, for me, I know that those are souls that we shouldn't play with. It's the reason why I tell you guys don't play with Ouija boards. Don't open yourself up to negative energy. Because there's a one thing I need to let you guys know. Evil spirits can only touch touch you if you let them. Evil spirits. Oh my God! Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Darcy. Thank you so much for that. I so so, so appreciate that. She goes. Thank you for being you. Much love to your family. Oh my God! You didn't have to send me twenty dollars. Are you kidding me? Thank you so freaking much. I'm gonna use that for my coffee runs. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for all the stars that you guys sent me as well. So what I want you guys to know is this: is that um, you know, when connecting with it, with, with the other side, I've learned one thing. Because when I was younger. All souls would try to talk to me, good and bad, especially when I was first coming into my gift because I didn't know any better. But what I have to tell you is that, and by the way, this is something that what I'm sharing with you guys is things that 
you know, my team has told me like never to share. Like my publicist, if she, when, when, when she hears like that, I'm sharing this story with you, she's gonna be like, Matt, you can't be sharing things like that. You can't be telling people things like that. But you know, I got to tell you guys the truth, right? I'd be lying to you if I didn't, if I didn't share with you certain things. So the certain thing I got to share with you is that back when I was younger, you know, all souls would try to talk to me, good or bad, right? And that's when I realized that there were two different vibrations, the higher vibration, and the lower vibration. And I realized that the higher vibration, meaning our loved ones that are in heaven, that are watching over us, want good things for us, right? And the lower vibration, souls that don't go to the other side, are still angry, mean, and nasty, and don't want good things for us, don't want to see us succeed in life. So what I can tell you is this, is that, you know, that's the reason why I frown on the Ouija boards. That's the reason why I, fr I frown on, you know, talking to, to lower souls. Because let me just ask you a question. Just like an evil spirit, right? Evil people, negative people here in this world. Have you ever got caught up with an, with an evil person or negative person who's alive and you talk to them? Have you ever tried to, to, to ration with somebody who is just negative and mean and plain and nasty here in this world? Just plain out nasty, right? You try to reason with them. You try to help them. And the more that you try to help them, the more you try to reason with them, it feels like they suck your energy from you. You know, you are left in a million pieces and they're left high in their horse, right? You smell like, as, as my family says, you come out like shit and they come out smelling like a rose. How many of you, how many of you have had that situation, right? What I can tell you guys is this, Karen saying, yup. Um, Karen, Karen saying, yup. Jeannie is saying, yup. I see that uh, Taylor is saying for sure. What I want you guys to know is this. What I want you to know is that it's the same thing with evil and uh, with evil people, evil people and evil energies. You know, evil people, evil souls, evil energies. They want to bring you down. They don't want you to meet your soulmate. They don't want you to land that dream job. They don't want you, you know, to live a good and happy life. Right. It's the reason why they haunt you. They want to pretend like they have some control of your life. They want you to be scared. They want to invoke fear. But our loved ones in spirit always want to lift us up. That's the reason why I won't talk to evil souls or negative souls. And I do a lot of work to make sure that they don't come anywhere near me. I don't even see them. When I do readings, I always make sure before I do every reading, I pray. I set my intention. You know, every single day I, pr I pray multiple times a day. I'm really strong in my faith. I'm really strong in connecting with, you know, God, the ascended masters, those on the other side, the souls that want to help us. Because of the fact that I know that when they do come through, they want to be able to deliver messages that are going to help us to heal. And those who are lower don't want to do anything like that. So I'm sharing this with you because in the beginning, I was afraid when evil souls would talk to me, right? I, I almost pushed my mediumship away. But what I learned from my grandmother in spirit who had died, right? My grandmother who had passed away, she was also psychic. She explained to me this. She showed me on the other side that evil spirits can only come into your life if you let them. You know, if you let them in, for example, letting them in would be practicing unsafe mediumship, not praying, not keeping yourself grounds and protected, using it for the wrong reasons, using Ouija boards, things like that, right? But when you block out that world, when you block out evil and negativity, you don't let it exist in your world. That's one of the things that I want to share with all of you, because it's the same thing with negative people. Most of the time, right, we feel like we have to be a part of somebody who's e evil, who's nasty, who's negative, right? We feel like we can't let go of the ties here on earth. But what I can tell you is, is that when you do, when you learn to not let those people bother you, when you learn to let those people not come into your life, it's amazing because they can't affect your energy. They can't affect who you are. They can say bad things about you. They can do rumors about you. They can do all these things, but they can't affect who you are. You know, I've learned that because being a medium, people will say anything they want about you, especially having a, t a reality TV show. You know, people were saying terrible, terrible things, saying that I was a fake. I was a con artist. I was a fraud. My abilities weren't real. I was, I was cold reading. They were saying that, you know, Alexa was paid to be my wife. They were telling me, oh, oh my God, all these different things people wrote about me, right? All the negative and nasty people, not you guys, of course. I love you guys so much. Um, but anyways, all those all those negative things came out. But guess what? It doesn't bother me because I don't let it in. But I'll tell you that this is the same thing that I had to I have to share with so many of my celebrity clients. You would not believe if I told you guys. I can't tell you because you know um, a lot of those readings are personal, and confidential. But if I told you some of the names of the people that I read for that literally were feeling um, were, were feeling um, down and out because of the terrible things that people had said about them, right? And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, you're seeing things wrong. All these people love you. They care about you. Like this, this, a lot of these celebrities, right? There's 
thousands, of, I shouldn't say thousands, there's millions of people that want wonderful things for them, that love them, that appreciate their work, their music, their life, so on and so forth, right? But those few people who write those neg negative and terrible and angry things are the ones that they let get to them. They absorb that energy instead of feeding off of the energy from their fan base, from their, their following, from the people who truly care about them. So what I want you guys to know is this, is that I've had to teach this to a lot of my celebrity clients is don't let them in. Don't let those negative, let, let people say what they want. Who cares that they're, that they're saying things that are untrue? Who cares that, you know, they're talking badly about you because your true following is your true following. And they know the real you no matter what. Like you guys know the re real me no matter what, right? It's the reason why I love coming on here. I love being live with you guys. I love being on here and sharing all these stories. It's the reason why I get deep and personal. It's the reason why, you know, I post pictures of, you know, my family and my life and so much with all of you guys because I love you so much because I know that you love me. And that just makes me feel so special. Same thing with Alexa. We talk about it all the time. And when you feed into positive energy, you push away the negative energy. Like if you see here on my Facebook and my YouTube and my and my. Um, Instagram, all my social media. I I really thank God, knock on wood. I barely get any hate. There's once in a while there's a troll that comes in or someone that you know stumbles upon the account, but I gotta tell you, it's very rare. And it's funny because a lot of celebrities that follow me will say, Matt, how come you don't get like the haters? Do you have like somebody and they always think like I got like this company? Like, do you have a company that just constantly monitors your feed? And I'm like, no, I just don't give my attention to haters. If there's haters on my page, I don't engage with them. I don't want nothing to do with them. I only talk to the good people on my page, right? And they're like, oh my God, I should start trying that. They're like, they're like all the time, I, I, I answer hateful comments. They're like, I do this, I do that, I do the other thing, I block them. I'm like, listen, don't give them your energy. You're already giving them your energy, right? Just by saying that. Go and block them out. The same way social media has a block button for a reason, right? Same way you can block someone on social media, block them in life. Don't let their, 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 don't let their evil, terrible ways affect you here in life. So that's what I want to share with all of you guys, because what I want you guys to know is that evil spirits and angry spirits, you know, they all have the same thing in common. But what I have to tell you is, is that, you know, um, I also wanted to, wanted to explain this to you because yes, not all souls don't, not all souls make it to heaven, but it's very, very rare. And you have had to do something incredibly horrible not to make it to the other side. So. That's the reason why I want to make this video because I don't want anybody in fear thinking that your loved ones are not in heaven. Because if you've seen the readings that I do, that I've, that I've done, you know, I've talked to many, many, many souls and, you know, souls who have passed in the most tragic ways and those souls have made it to the other side. So um, that's what I want to let you guys know. It's just a small, it's a small uh, fraction of people that don't. And it's for the, for the reasons that I've outlined. So I want to let you guys know that. And hopefully that brings up your spirits in your day. And I also want you guys to know um, two important things, right? I am back on tour, back on tour next week. So I hope that all of you enjoy this next week off. Um, I am heading next week to give live readings in Plymouth, Massachusetts. So if you can see me in Massachusetts, I'll be giving live readings on July 14th and 15th at Plymouth, Massachusetts. I'll be at Plymouth Memorial Hall. There's only a few spots left. There's also meet and greet tickets available for that event. And then listen, if you can't make it to that event, I'm also coming to Las Vegas. So every year I try to come to Las Vegas once a year to do one small special event. This year I'm actually doing two back to back. So July, I think it's J July. Is it? Let me see what the dates were. Hold on. July, oh, I was right. July 21st and July 22nd, I'll be giving live readings in Las Vegas. I know that so many of you guys are coming. I know that many of you have already booked your airfare and you're coming from all different parts of the country. I cannot wait to meet you. This is the smallest event that I do, you guys. So everyone thinks Las Vegas and they think it's 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 a, huge, a super huge event. The Las Vegas event is at a small showroom. It's at the, the Summit showroom in the Las Vegas Venetian. And it's literally like being in someone's living room. I absolutely love it. It's the most comfy, cozy, intimate event that I do. It's the reason why I only do, um, I only do um, one visit to Vegas per year. So I'll be doing two back-to-back -back shows there. We're almost sold out. So if you can come and see me in Vegas, if it's not a far stretch and you can make it, I highly, highly recommend you go to the Las Vegas Venetian because that's the smallest event that I do on tour. It's the most um, intimate event that I do on tour. And it's so super special to me. So I hope to see you guys there. Also, I want to let you guys know that I am coming so after Las Vegas, I'll be heading to Sacramento, California, Northfield, Ohio, Erie, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Detroit, Michigan, Moncton, Canada, Harris, Michigan, Omaha, Nebraska, 
Laughlin, Nevada, and I'm also coming to Santa Rosa, California. You can get tickets right on my website, meetmattfrazier.com. That's where you can go right here to reserve your spot. And I also want you guys to know, if you can't make it to a live event, if you can't come and see me in person, try attending an online reading. You know, everybody keeps saying to me, Matt, how do I get a reading with you? How do I get a reading with you? Here's a secret that like not a lot of people know. Every single reading that you see me do on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, all those hundreds of readings that I've, that I've, that I've done, I've read, literally read over a thousand people online. Those are not private readings. Ask anybody who has gotten a reading from me. Every single person who has gotten a reading from me has done so by attending a live online group reading. It's only $19 to attend. And I do these, these online readings for one reason. I'm going to leave the, I'm going to post the link in the comments. I do these um, online readings for one reason. It's because of the fact that I know I'm not going to get to every city. I know I'm not going to get to every state, right? And because of these online readings, I've been able to meet so many of you and been able to visit so many places that I would have never been able to, to visit on tour. For example, yesterday there were women who had, got, who had gotten reading from who have gotten readings from me from Salt Lake City. I also read people from uh, uh, Kansas. I read people from different parts of Canada. There was also someone who attended from the UK, which was really cool. So what I want you guys to know is that it doesn't matter where you live. It just matters that you're there. But the thing is, is that I can only allow a limited amount of people per each online reading. So what I want you guys to know is that June is completely sold out. There's no more events in June. July is sold out, but I do have um, two open dates in August. Okay. in their weekend date. So if you can join me, okay. I think it's on Saturday and su there's, a, the, the, there's a Saturday and Sunday event in August. I'll be doing readings at 12 o'clock noon, helping you connect with your loved ones. You've got to go to my website right now. Meetmattfraser.com. Meetmattfraser.com. That's where you can go to attend a live online reading with me. So if there's been someone that you've been looking to hear from on the other side, if there's someone that you've been trying to get in touch with, You've got to make sure that you're there because I can only read you if you come to a live show in person or if you come and join me at an online group reading. It takes place on Zoom. You don't need any fancy technology to attend. You just got to make sure that you're there. So to reserve that spot, head on over to meetmattfraser.com and click on online readings. Once you're there, it's going to look like this. I'll show you on my phone. So once you're there, you get to a website that looks like this and then you'll see all the dates. Look at this. All of these dates are literally sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. But we got these three dates left, August 19th, August 20th, and August 24th. So if you want to attend with me, right, it's $19 to attend. Look at that, $19 to attend this online reading. But you've got to go right now to meetmattfraser.com and make sure that you sign up. I can't stress this enough. And I know I'm going to say this, and I know that there'll be some people that still won't attend, that still won't get their tickets. And that's the saddest thing. Because like I said, if for those of you who don't get, get tickets, you're missing out on hearing a message from a loved one on the other side and being a part of channeling the other side. It's literally like a seance where we, where, where literally, literally the moment that you attend, your loved ones start speaking in my ear and delivering messages to me. And I start delivering them to all of you. So I really hope you'll be a part of that event. For all of you who have who have already been a part of it, I've been able to read over a thousand of you guys. I've had such an amazing time reading you, meeting you guys, and seeing your loved ones. So that being said, I am on a mission this year. I'm trying to get to as many of you as possible because I won't rest until I read as many people as I possibly can. That's my that's my promise to you guys. And um, whether it be online or at an in-person event, I cannot wait to meet you. And also, I can't wait to help you connect with your loved ones on the other side. So trust in the signs. Know that there's nothing that you have to worry about and that your loved ones are always with you. And if you found this video helpful, please share it. Because when you share my videos, you help get the word out to other hurting people who are looking for that little bit of hope and to know a little bit more about heaven in the afterlife. Because the saddest thing is, is when we lose a loved one, it's the hardest thing that we ever go through. But the truth is, is that our loved ones are always with us and knowing that can be life-changing. It's the reason why I do these videos. It's the reason why I'm sure you guys had found me. And more importantly, I know that you found me for a reason. I know that you were divinely led to me, probably because there's someone in spirit who's been trying to get in touch with you. So whether I see you online or in person, remember meetmattfraser.com because if the dead can find me, so can you. So here's how it's spelled, meetmattfraser.com. I'm telling you this because you know I said meetmattfraser.com and somebody thought it was like meet Matt Fraser, like M-E-A-T. I go, what the hell's wrong with you? I'm like, it's me. Why would the website be M-E-A-T, mattfraser.com? 
That's what a woman, a woman literally thought it was M-E-A-T.com. I'm like, are you kidding me? No, meet Matt. Fra it's spelled like this, meet Matt Frazier.com. Um, that's where you can go to sign up for an online reading or event. All right. I talked enough. I've been on here for 45 minutes. I love you guys. I hope this video um, came at the right time to you. And if you, if you tuned in late, start it over. I'll, I'll post this on YouTube. I'll post this on my um, Facebook page. Start it over and watch it from the beginning because there's so much that I talk about that I'm sure you need to hear right now. And more importantly, I think it's going to answer a lot of questions for you. So I love you guys. Thank you for the, con for the concept positivity, the love that you share with Alexa, I, and Royce. And uh, we can't wait to see you guys in Las Vegas and in Plymouth. See you soon.